WinWitch software easily inputs data from any RS-232 device directly into any Windows application. This video will show you how to configure WinWitch to read in data from an electronic balancer scale directly into Excel. When I run WinWitch from the Start menu, it opens in Setup mode. The first step to setting up WinWitch is to configure it to match the COM port settings for my balance. To do this, I click on the port menu and then click Settings. I know that my balance is connected to COM3. To complete the settings for my balance, I refer to the balance's user manual, and I learned that it communicates at 9600 baud, even parity, 7 data bits, and 1 stop bit. I choose these settings and click OK. Next, I need to test that I can receive data correctly and also determine the structure of the data that the balance transmits. To do this, I'll click on the port menu and select the Analyze option. Here, the input text box shows all incoming data from your device. The output text box is where you would enter data or commands to be sent out to your device. Most scales and balances will have a physical print button on it that will manually transmit a string of weight data to your PC. To test that my settings are correct, I will press the print button on my balance. I can see that the balance transmits the weight value followed by the units, and at the end of the data, I see two additional characters. The music note is a carriage return and the box with the circle in it is a line feed character. Carriage returns and line feed characters are commonly used to indicate the end of a string. At this point, I know everything is working correctly and I have a good understanding of how my balance structures its data. I can send a command for my balance to send back a weight reading. My balance's manual tells me that this command is escape p. To configure this, I'll put the cursor in the output field and then click ASCII chart, then select the escape character from the pop-up. I click OK to insert escape, then type in uppercase P. Next, I click the clear input button to clear out the existing data in the input data text box. Finally, I click send to send the escape P command out to the balance. The balance sends back a weight reading just like when I press the print button right on the balance. If you don't receive any data when you press the print button, then you either have the wrong COM port selected or you're using the wrong type of cable to connect to the balance. If you have questions about connecting your balance or scale to the serial, USB, or network ports on your PC, please contact us or view our connection methods video. If you receive data that is unrecognizable or a stream of garbage characters, then that means you have the correct COM port and your cable is good, but you have the wrong communications parameters selected in WoundWedge. The incorrect values could be in any of the baud rate, parity, data bits, or stop bits fields. I can now close the Analyze window and continue configuring WinWedge to feed my balance readings into Excel. WinWedge sends data out to Windows applications either by simulating keystrokes or using a feature of Windows called Dynamic Data Exchange or DDE. In this example, I will demonstrate the keystroke mode. To do this, I click on the mode menu and choose the Send Keystrokes To option. When I do this, a window opens where I can specify which application I want the data in. The default settings specify to send all the data to Notepad. To have WinWedge send the data to Excel, I will enter Excel for the title bar text option and then delete everything from the command line field, then click OK. WinWedge allows you to define your data structure in many ways. For instance, you could easily define the device data as a single field and have WinWedge send just the weight numbers into a column in Excel. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how to send the weight numbers and the units to two separate columns in Excel. I open the Define menu and select the Input Data Record Structure option. Here, I can define the structure of the balance data for parsing and filtering. WinWedge allows me to define the start and end of each data record. In this example, my balance is sending numeric data values that end with a carriage return line feed pair. So, I select numeric character received for the start of record event, and also choose carriage return or CRLF received for the end of record event. 
This tells Winwich to start reading in data when the first number comes in and keep reading until a carriage return or a carriage return line feed is received. When I click continue, I'm prompted to select the input record structure. I want to define my data as two fields, so I'll select each data record contains multiple delimited data fields and click continue. The next window asks me to select the delimiter character and also specify the maximum number of data fields that will appear in each record. I'll select the space character as the delimiter and also specify that I'm expecting only two data fields per record. When I click Continue, the Input Record Definition Editor appears. This final window is where I'll tell WinWedge how to deal with each field. It also allows me to add keystrokes before or after each field so it's fed correctly into Excel. My first field contains the weight value. I'll set the filter option for field 1 to numeric data only to make sure that only the number is sent to Excel. After WinWedge types the first field in a cell, I want the cursor to tab automatically to the next cell. So, I'll select the Field Postamble Keystrokes text box and click Keystroke List. I choose the tab keystroke from the list and click OK. I then click Next field to set the parameters for the second data field which contains the units. For this field, I'll leave the filter option set to None. After the units are entered in Excel, I want to return the cursor to the original column in the next row down. To accomplish this, I add a down arrow keystroke and then a left arrow keystroke in the post amble keystrokes for field 2. This simulates the keystrokes that I would type if I were manually entering the data in Excel. I'm finished defining how I want WinWedge to parse and filter, so I click the OK button to return to the main WinWedge setup window. I know from the Analyze window that sending my balance in Escape P string triggers a weight reading. WinWedge allows you to define hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts to send commands like Escape P more easily. You can configure these under the Define menu by clicking Hotkeys and Hotkey Actions. I want to set up a hotkey that will send the Escape P string. So, under Hotkey Action, I'll select Transmit String. I want this to happen whenever I press the F9 key on my keyboard. So, I'll click in the Keystroke text box and then press F9. I'll add the escape character and letter P as the string to transmit. Then click OK to save. At this point, WinWedge is completely configured to work the way I want, so I'll go to the File menu and save my settings somewhere where I can easily access it. I can use this configuration file every time I want to collect data from my balance. To test my configuration, I'll open the Activate menu and select Test Mode. The activated window of WinWedge appears, and it shows the fields that I configured in the Definition Editor, the weight and the units. I can open any Excel doc and put the cursor into the cell where I want the data to go. Now, every time I press F9, WinWedge pulls data from my scale, separates the weight and unit, types them into separate columns in Excel, and then moves the cursor to the start of the next row. As you can see, WinWedge makes it extremely easy to take data from any electronic scale, balance, or other device into any application including databases, web forms, and much more.